All right, good uh, day to you. And we're going to go ahead today and do tuples and lists and introduction to that for uh, assignment 136 in PLTW CSP. All right, so let's go ahead and start our log. Log start dash ORT. And let's do log 136.log. Okay, all right, log started, good to go. All right, so let's start with uh, what they are and what they're referring to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, start by defining what they are, okay? Sort of the syntax for them. So we have two types of things we're going to cover in here. The first one is a tuple. A tuple is a sequence of values, very similar to, in a way, similar to a list, okay? But the way we assign a tuple and the way we um, notify what that is in Python is we use a set of parentheses, okay? So for example, if I want to say letter A equals the following tuple, like that, I've now assigned that, okay? Now this entire tuple is now bound to a variable set, variable a okay now variable a this isn't iterable by the way so in case i want to actually later make a loop that goes through this tuple we can okay but that you'll notice that the main difference between and you'll learn the main difference between this and a list is that once you assign this the only way to get rid of it is to assign something else to it okay so right now that assign is two four five and if i type in i get that as my output okay i can reassign it as a different tuple 45 44, 20, whatever, right? And that's okay. I can still reassign it. But the whole point is as we start learning operations and things that we can do, um, we can, we cannot change this tuple. So I'll show you an example, right? If I do A plus equals 45, all right, it's going to say, nope, can't do it, okay? Can't do it. Now, this style convention here is using parentheses, and we use syntax. Now, the nice thing about tuples, one of the cool things about tuples, is that you can, and this also goes in a way it goes, goes for lists, but definitely for tuples, you can have multiple variable types inside the tuple. Okay? So for example, if I want to do a string, and then I want to do uh, an integer, and then I want to do a float, I'm allowed to do that. Okay? So I can have different variable types inside the tuple, which is, which is helpful. Just like with strings, I also can call specific values up. Okay, so if I use those brackets and I type a bracket zero, what should what should be the output? Jeff. It should be Jeff, right? It should be the first the first value in the tuple. I also can have it output just like uh, just like with strings. I also can have it type in specific values or specific range of values, right? If I do zero uh, colon two, it will tell us the first two elements in the tuple. I also can just like others. I can also start you know, at a different value and end at a different value and give just those last two, okay? So you can, you can slice through a tuple as well or call up specific elements uh, just like a string, okay? So anything that you can iterate through is going to have this, this capability. So um, if I were to assign values, okay? So this, this, what, what I'm going to show you here is this is something that I can actually do um, in a list that I cannot do in a tuple, okay? If I say, let's change element two in A, and I change it to a string like that, okay? If I try to do that, it's gonna remind me that I cannot do that, okay? A tuple does not support item assignment. That means that I cannot go into the tuple and change elements in the exact same tuple, okay? My only way around that is to reassign the entire thing, okay? So tuples are very useful for when you want to keep things fixed and you don't want them to allow to be changed. Okay. Now, this particular activity, 136, does have a couple of problems where you'll kind of be examining some syntax in tuples. And it does ask you to make some predictions. And I'll have you do that on your own. But one of the examples is, for example, uh, if I say a bracket 1 and then I put a double equals, and I type uh, 3.0, right? What do you think the output would be? Okay. So remember, our tuple values are Jeff, 3, and 4.0 in that order, right? So this value here, A1, is going, to, is going to be calling on the second element in the tuple, which is 3, okay? So we're going to say true or false to that, okay? It is true, okay? 
because value val the the value is the same even though the types that I typed in are different the three is an integer but the 3.0 right the value is just checking to see if it's equal so that works okay so you can do conditionals you know based on elements in a tuple you can uh, have it check you know those elements as well all right so that's tuples now let's talk about lists okay the syntax difference for lists is that if I want to make a list I do b equals and I'm going to use brackets and just like tuples, I can have different types of data, different types of uh, values inside a list, just like I can have different side of th types of values inside of tuple. For example, a, b, and three, right? So I have two, in I have two strings, <coughs> two string values, and I have an integer, okay? So, however, and then just, oh, sorry, not however, uh, just like, and just like with um, tuples, I can index, I can call out specific values in the list, I can type in a range of values, right? I can have it output that, all right? So the brackets in this case mean a list. So parentheses for tuples, brackets for lists, okay? Now, if I want to, unlike a tuple, if I want to assign different, a different value to a list, I can say, for example, you know what? I don't want that third value to be uh, three anymore. I want that to be five. So I can say values two equals five, okay? Oops, I said values, I meant B, my fault. I'm saying the value. If I want to take B two and make it equal five, right? Okay? And then if I type the list B, you'll see that the, that the third element is now five instead of three, okay? So unlike a tuple, I can change the individual elements in a list, okay? Next question? So uh, tuples are like a fixed set of whatever your values yes. you put in. Yes, fixed, the fixed list, list. List is you can uh, change values. You can change it. Yep. I got something for you. Mm -hmm. Why would you ever make a tuple then? You would make, if you would want to make a tuple, the tuple would be of values that you don't want changed. So for example, maybe it's names of people in a class. Okay, and yeah, for the most part, changes. for the most like, like like the second half of the year, I'm just thinking of an example off the top of my head. Okay. So that's a possibility, okay? So the there's a, there's a there's a two vocab words that kind of cover that concept, okay? So I'll put that in here. Tuples are considered immutable, okay? Whereas lists are mutable, okay? That basically means uh, mutable, mutable, if I can type it, uh, means it can be changed, okay? All right, so those are the you know, sort of vocab introduction there. Now, unlike a tuple, again, we also can add to the list. And I mean by add a list, I mean we can have more elements inside the list. So currently our value for this list is AB5, right? Well, I can also add to this list by using the following command. I can say B plus equals and then insert a bracket and then type in six, eight, three, 255, you know, and then close my bracket. And then when I type B, you'll see that my list has gotten bigger. Okay, that's called appending. All right. You also, in addition to um, doing it like that, you also can actually add to the list by using a built-in function that Python automatically assigns to every list. Okay, and that would <coughs> the syntax for that would be this: if I do b dot append, and then open a set of parentheses, and then a bracket, and then have it type in, you know. Um, hello, happy Friday, you know, to that. Drop close bracket and then close that, okay? And then see if I type that list, now those elements are added on as well. Now notice, I do want to show you one thing. Um, we, can, we can sort of use this as a teaching moment here, right? Okay, by adding the brackets, I just put a list into a list, okay? So in other words, sort of a, you know, inception going on here, you can have lists as elements of the list, okay? Which is gonna kind of come into play when we start talking about image arrays. Question? Is there a way to put the list anywhere in between or in the middle? Can we, that's a good question. Can I add to the list in between? That's a great question, okay? Um, <clears throat> what's the syntax for it? That's a question. Let's pause for it.
So the answer to that question, yes, is uh, we had to, we did have to pause and uh, kind of look up just to make sure we had the right syntax, and you can see that syntax is already in there. So the correct answer is yes, we can. If you use the insert function, and basically the first argument would be what position you want to put it at, and then what is the element that you want to put in. Okay. So my, uh, I'm wondering though if, and I'm, and I don't want to try it right now, but I'm wondering if you want to insert multiple things at the same time. I wonder if you can do that as well. What if I, for example, said um, made this a list of values, would it insert the list or would it insert each of those values? So I'm not really sure, but that one definitely works. As you can see, our new list has that five in the third position. Okay, so <clears throat> we can insert values in between a list as well as adding on to the end of it. <coughs> okay, great. So um, there are other ways and other functions and features that you can use as well uh, that you'll be researching in this, in this activity. Now, the last thing that you're going to need for this activity is you're going to be adding in a module, and that module is the random module. Okay, so if I type in import, <coughs> that's what allows me to insert um, insert modules that are that are not normally loaded when you load up Python. Okay, so if I import random, now what happens is I have another library of functions that allow that I'm allowed to use. This particular uh, module has lots of other functions, and you won't use most of them. You only use a few of them for this uh, for this activity, and I'll show you what those are. Okay, let's say for example, the first item, the first function is random dot choice. Okay, now random dot choice allows you to pick a random element from a list. So since I have a large list B, if I hit enter here, it will tell me one of the values off that list, and if I run that same command. Uh, if I run that same command again, it'll give me another element, okay? And I can basically rinse and repeat that as much in that time I pick the list that we put in, right? So random.choice is function number one. There also is random.randint, okay? And by the way, here's the syntax. The module first, dot, and then the function from that module. So if you want to research, and there's a link in the activity that gives you um, a way to access what those mo uh, those those uh, functions are, like the one you showed me last night, right? Um, so there's lots of others that you can test out and see as well. Rand int asks for the following arguments. It says, okay, give me a value from bottom bottom value all the way up to the highest value you want, and then it will pick a random integer including the bounds you give. Okay, so in this case, if I pick 695, it'll pick a number between 6 and 95. In this case, it's 30. Okay, and I keep hitting space and calling midterm. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, that's, let's see here. That's what I want. And if I do it again, right, 12, 37, and so forth, right? So every time you do it, it should pick another random random integer. The last function you'll need is random.uniform. Random.uniform picks a float value between the two bounds you give. So if you give 5 and 8, it's going to pick truly a random number giving you lots of precision with that, right? 6.23, there's obviously going to be quite a few possible values that can come out from this function, right? You can even have it pick, you can even use floats as your bounds. So for example, if I want a number between 9.5 and 9.6, it'll give me a number between 9.5 and 9.6, okay? So those are the- Is there any th reason why the arguments for rand dot, or sorry, rand int can't be a float? Uh, for random, because the, the job here is to pick an integer. No, no, it but picks an integer. Why can't you pick? Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Let's try that. Let's see. Let's let's check. I I don't think there is a reason. Let's try it. Let's see if I do 5.5 .5 and 6. Point, yeah, well, that was easy. 15.5. So it doesn't. Yeah, so it wants integer arguments for that. Okay. okay. So good question. All right. So uh, in this in this activity, when you get down to this part. Okay, this is where the functions come in. So you're going to be doing, when you're doing lists and tuples, you're going to be doing uh, a couple of testing inputs and, and commenting on what, you're, what you think is going to happen. But when you get to the part three, which is using the random module, you're going to be writing uh, two functions. Okay, and the two functions, one of them is called roll two dice. Okay, uh, and let me comment this so you can say, okay, roll two dice, which will return the sum of two six-sided dice, okay? You would have to, of course, use the random module to come up with the function, to come up with it within your function to, to do this, right? Um, and also note that it's two six-sided dice means you have to have two events. It's not a 12-sided die, yeah, because the probability of any number coming up in a 12-sided die is uh, equal, but the probabilities between two six-sided dice sum is uh, not equal, okay? They're not, they're not uh, evenly distributed. And the second function you'll need in this one is guess letter. Okay, and guess letter 
uh, is basically going to return a random letter from the alphabet. Okay? So uh, you can think right here, you know, how you're going to strategize between how you're going to make this particular function. Uh, a lot of you are probably going to want to make a list. Okay? However, I challenge you, there is a way to do it with a, with a string. Okay? I challenge you to, to, to come up with a, with a way to do that. Okay? Um, so that concludes this particular lesson. So 136 is your, uh, is your job today. And uh, good luck.